going to use CNM glass today to learn more about the homeostatic control mechanism. A homeostatic control mechanism consists of three main components. We're going to have a receptor, we're going to have a control center, and then we're going to have an effector or effectors. And so what are all of these components? Receptors are structures in various parts of your body, such as your skin, that can detect changes in the environment. In other words, they detect stimuli. A stimulus is a change in the environment. Stimuli is plural. Now, this environment could be an internal environment or it could be an external environment. So, for instance, food arriving in your stomach to where your stomach is stretched would be an example of an internal stimulus. Receptors are going to communicate with the control center and they do that via a pathway we will be referring to as the afferent pathway. Very often the control center is going to be the central nervous system, system which includes the brain, and I'm abbreviating, and the spinal cord, or it could be usually a, a major gland that functions as the control center. And the control center is actually going to process the information that is arriving from the receptor. The control center, after it has processed the information, can send out commands, and that's just what I'll call them, commands via the efferent pathway. Notice that we spell efferent with the letter E because we're exiting the control center. The receptors send signals to the control center. As a matter of fact, we use the afferent pathway. Think of adding information, which is why we spell this with an A, exiting information from the control center. So efferent pathway. And these commands I just mentioned are go going to make it to the effectors. The effectors include all muscles in our body as well as all of our glands. And when I say muscles, I'm not just talking about the muscles that you use to pick up this table with, not just your skeletal muscles. We're also talking about your heart muscle. We're also talking about the muscle that forms the walls of your hollow organs, like your bladder wall, your stomach wall, your esophagus, esophagus wall, etc., etc. So this whole flow chart pretty much is what is going to form the foundation of everything in this class and everything for everything in anatomy and physiology and even your future classes such as pathophysiology. As a matter of fact, the simple flow chart is going to play a very important role for you in order to take proper care of your patients. Because anytime something is wrong with your patients, remember that means that there is some problem with the homeostatic conditions of the body. Something has pushed the body beyond those limited ranges that the body should stay within in order to maintain homeostasis. So we refer to this whole flow chart as a homeostatic control mechanism. Now, we're going to see throughout our time in anatomy and physiology one and in anatomy and physiology two and in pathophysiology as well, you're going to come across the two different mechanisms or I should say feedback mechanisms, meaning specific uh, types of uh, control mechanisms that help maintain homeostasis in the body. And they're going to be referred to as negative feedback mechanisms and positive feedback mechanisms. With negative feedback mechanisms, being the ones that are the most common 
in the body. And so this wraps up our discussion of the homeostatic control mechanism.